Hello! In today's video, we're going to walk you through how to actually get the Chorus environment started on your laptop. Um, with Chorus, one of the things that we're trying to balance is our desire to make the setup process super easy, super fast, very foolproof, five minutes and you've got the whole environment up and can start playing with it. But we also want to educate you and let you understand how all the different components that make Chorus, all these different open source projects, work together. So to that end, uh, what we've got is a Docker Compose based environment, which will manage firing up all of these different components and, you know, sort of insulate you away from installing all of the dependencies. But we're going to have you go through actually downloading and installing the data and configuring each component. So to get started, uh, we're going to uh, run docker compose up minus minus build. And what this is doing, uh, for those of you who aren't uh, familiar with Docker, is we're building our custom version of Solar that has the quirky query rewriting library bundled into it. We're also downloading some images that we need, like MySQL and Redis. And we are downloading and deploying our offline relevancy tools, Cupid and RRE, as well as SMUI, the Smirch Search Management User Interface, which we use for managing all of our custom query rules uh, that we feed to Quirky. So you can see here it's running. And uh, this will take a couple of minutes to fire up all of these dependencies. And through this video, I'll walk you through each one of these components, what port it's running on, and just kind of at a high level, let you understand things. So the first thing we need to do is to go ahead and download our data uh, once our servers are all running. So we are using a public data set from IceCat, uh, uh, which is predominantly e-commerce related products. Uh, although we have other things like drip coffee makers and other things, we have 150,000 products all with images and uh, attributed metadata. Um, so we've got all of that. And we'll just kind of confirm that everything's up and running. Yep, everything's up and running. And then now that I've downloaded the file using wgit, I'm going to untar this file and pipe it via uh, to a curl command, which is going to install it. So uh, this process isn't super fast, so it'll take about five minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. I'll be back in a couple of minutes when this is done. Great, we're done. Uh, so you can see uh, 224 seconds it took to load the data, so it can take a little bit. But now we have the information to load it. So let's go and check it out. So the next step is to go to our browser and uh, we're going to bring up Solar. And as you can see here, Solar is running on 8983. I'm going to do a quick query. And you can see here is our products. We have 150,000 products. You can see here's a bunch of data about them. We have images, we have attributes, we have descriptive data. But honestly, this is you know pretty tough way of looking at your data, and is very very you know you want to be a developer. There, if only there was a better way of looking at it. So uh, maybe we could yeah better way of looking at it. So fortunately, we have a mock e-commerce store running on port 4000. Takes a second to start up. Ta-da! Welcome to Chorus Electronics Online Store. So here we're using a open source project called Blacklight that uh, sort of built around building a web uh, UI for solar indexes. And let's go ahead and do a search. Let's go look for some drip coffee makers. Let's see what we have in our e-commerce store. And so, and there we go. There's some drip coffee makers laid out in our familiar grid pattern that we see so often in e-commerce. 
and compare this to looking at solar and looking at this data, right? If you're talking to a merchandiser, you're talking to someone in the business, this is a much easier interface to look at, very easy to customize as well. So uh, we have a lot of the standard capabilities that you might expect. For example, we've got faceting here, so we can look at all the different brands in our data set. If we were curious what colors we support, what, what colors of coffee makers we have, we can see them there. Uh, even, you know, we can look at sort of things by like how recently were they introduced into the market, you know, within five years, 10, 25. So all of this is very easy to customize, really good for just getting a friendly UI in front of someone. Uh, we could, you know, look at, our, you know, we got some autocomplete, sort of the basics uh, that you would want. So, so that's great. Um, however, you know, let's talk about, you know, now that we have our data up, how do we improve relevance? Well, one of the key features of, of, of Chorus, as I mentioned, was that we, um, embed in our solar index the quirky library and we deploy a tool called SMUI, the search management uh, the search management UI which runs on uh, port 9000 localhost colon 9000 and this is an editor an interface for us to manage the rules now when we first start up we have not you see an error occurred we have not yet configured it uh, so today, uh, on the very first time, you actually have to uh, run um, a you have to run a curl command to actually create our index. So as you can see here, we're creating an index called e-commerce with the name or description e-commerce demo. So we're gonna go ahead and run that. Uh, and we actually get back this is sort of the, the unique ID of that configuration. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually add some, do two more configurations. So we'll uh, go ahead and export that into the browser. And so we're gonna set up, uh, we're gonna tell Smooey about some suggested fields out of all the attributes that are out there. We wanna, we wanna have as a suggested field in the GUI, we wanna tell it about product types. So we've added that. And we want to tell it about product titles. So there's the second command. Great. So we've now run that. Now let's go back to Smooey and let's go ahead and reload it and make sure we have it's there. So as you can see, Smooey is set up to run for multiple different indexes. And Smooey is set up so as we manage the rules, which we're not going to get into in this video, that'll be in a further video. So we're going to push these rules, an empty rules file, into Solar. And Chorus sets up that interaction between these two projects. And there you can see it, updating uh, the search management config for the Solar Index was successful. So now we have our library for managing rules set up. So how are we going to measure how good our search is or isn't? And that's where we're going to pivot to setting up our offline testing environment. Today, we have two open source projects integrated into Chorus, Cupid and Rated Ranking Evaluator. We'll go ahead and start with Cupid and then uh, we'll go to Rated Ranking Evaluator. So, so uh, to set up Cupid, first we have to run a command to set up the database. And so right here, we're set creating the database in the MySQL database that we need. And then once this is all done, we're also going to run a command to create a demo user that we're going to use. So demo at example.com with the password password. There we go. And there we're setting it up. So once we have that done, we're now ready to log into Cupid. So Cupid runs on port 3000. So here we are, 
on the Cupid interface and we're going to go ahead and log in as demo at example.com with our password, the word password. And Cupid is an environment for doing relevancy testing. We're just going to go ahead and set up a brand new case for our Porous Electronics. We're not going to get into the details of this. We just want to make sure that the environments are properly set up. So we're going to change from the publicly hosted solar to our chorus, uh, part of the chorus stack solar. So localhost 8983, solar e-commerce select. We can ping it. Yep, great. It's set up. And then we're going to go ahead and title. We'll set the title. The primary key for our documents is ID. And then we're going to paste in, you know, we want some images. So maybe thumbnail these images, 500 by 500. We also want the name, supplier, and how about the product type? Um, you know, we also want the product type data. So we'll go ahead and put that in there. And lastly, let's go ahead and add our drip coffee makers. There we go. So here you can see we have our query here. There's our coffee makers, right? Should be the same coffee makers as we see in uh, black in our web our chorus electronics website we have Cupid set up. Again, in another video, we'll go into more uh, depth on this. So, all right, so next, right? So the, you know, the next uh, component is rated ranking evaluator. So uh, unlike Cupid, which is sort of a web application is built around a web, you know, running as a web application, rated ranking evaluator is a primarily a command line application. And so we want to just go ahead and confirm that we have it set up to run. So I'm going to switch back to uh, our editor. So we have a RRE environment and we're saying Maven RRE evaluate. And what this is doing is we're going to run a regression test for the query notebook, uh, just a single query. Although RRE is really meant to run like thousands of queries. So uh, one query should be no problem for it. So there you can see the environments, making sure. And here we're running this plugin. And there you can see we're running query group on name, query notebook. There's our query being run. So the output of that is what RRE calls eval the evaluation file. So, and we can just cat that out real quick, make sure we have it. There's evaluation. And you can see here's a whole bunch of data about what we were just looking at. Again, not important because fortunately we have a RRE report generator, which creates a report both in an Excel format but also publishes them to the RRE web dashboard. So once we publish these results, we'll go ahead and pull up that dashboard. There we go. And we publish the results. Great. So now I'll swap back, create a new tab, localhost colon 7979. Now, this is a very simplistic report here. All we're looking is to make sure, yep, there is our notebook query. It was run. Um, we only ran it once, so there is no sort of multiple experiments. There's no change in the data. Uh, but you can see, you know, these are the products we saw for the query notebook. So, um, yeah, so there you go. Uh, that's all of the pieces of Chorus working together. You saw that we had Solar running here with all of our products with the quirky library embedded. You saw how we could easily look at various products through this blacklight base interface that is more friendly for exposing the data uh, to other people. 
we configured search management UI SMUI to uh, be connected to our solar environment so we can start deploying rules and playing with the rules in real time. Uh, and then we also set up our Chorus Electronics case in Cupid connected to the same solar search index so we could start uh, assessing the quality of our search results. And then lastly, to make sure that we can you know, regression test our search quality at scale, which is what the RRE product does so well, we made sure that yes, the web dashboard was up and running and the various Maven commands could be run uh, in our local environment. All right, thank you very much. See you next time.